So last night we had a very intense but ultimately successful meeting and interview with one of these sources. And he described in very graphic details uh, torture and killings that happened at a KLA base across the border from here in Albania. I've seen a lot. I've seen people beaten, stabbed, hit with batons. I've seen people left without eating for five or six days. I've seen people who were put on bulletproof vests being shot at to, to see whether the bulletproof vest was working. I've seen people beaten up and killed. What he goes on to say in this interview is that the abuses, the torture and even killings were carried out often under the supervision of officers of the Kosovo Liberation Army. And some of the men behind this are in influential positions of authority in Kosovo today. I think what's also really important here is that these alleged abuses happened in a clearly designated KLA base. This wasn't some private home somewhere, but this was a KLA base, and it wasn't particularly a secret base. I mean, a lot of people, soldiers, supplies, food, weapons, all sorts of things were going through that base in Kukas on their way to the border, on their way to Kosovo during the war. After the interview, we went to that base in Kukas, and we went to the cemetery nearby where some of the victims may have been buried. We have sources who suggest that uh, remains were put in the cemetery secretly in the middle of the night. Um, and one of the interesting things that my Albanian colleague has found are uh, documents from the cemetery showing the people who were buried there in 1999. According to those documents, there are 20 or 30 unidentified uh, bodies, but they didn't seem to be there anymore. And it gets a little spooky because we start hearing things about um, people coming in, sort of cleanup crews, uh, to get rid of the evidence here in Albania about these killings, about these secret detention sites. But it's hard to get any more details on that. Um, we can't go dig up that cemetery. And it's yet another example of the UN's failure to really pursue some of these war crimes cases. International investigators had evidence six years ago about these killings um, and also about the cemetery. And I'm not aware of any investigation conducted in Kukis, uh into these killings, into these allegations. It's not to say that individual investigators, individual prosecutors from the UN haven't tried, but even those officials who were involved in war crimes and investigations, they will tell you, at least privately, that there was not an interest at the UN in Kosovo at pursuing major war crimes cases, especially when it concerned um, suspects who may have been associated with the Kosovo Liberation Army. And one of the reasons was that these former KLA fighters are powerful figures. And when NATO and the United Nations came into Kosovo, and the United States troops as well, it was felt that these KLA figures, who were respected by the ethnic Albanians in Kosovo, who had uh, men willing to fight for them, that they were the key to stability. What's really interesting when I talk to just people I know in Kosovo these days, people are tired uh, from what they see is this ruling elite of former guerrilla fighters or people associated with the KLA who have become, some people would say, mafia type people who are incredibly corrupt and are corrupting or further corrupting the province. And that's what they tell me, that they want something different to have a real discussion about the war, to have a real discussion about crimes committed in the name of the KLA, if not by the KLA. Maybe they feel that the time is approaching that those issues can be taken on without, without being accused of being a traitor to the Kosovo cause. Maybe our reporting 
will help open up some of these questions to the broader public. Maybe it'll help people stand up and say, hey, we want answers, and we want answers from our government. And, and maybe uh, it's a hopeful note that our work might have some impact, that the timing is right.